Remember, in Gravity Falls, there is no one you can trust. No one you can trust. Hello! Ah! Usually the cartoons that are the most notable and leave the biggest impact do just that because they transcend whatever it means to be just a cartoon. They become something bigger, they stand for something more. And I can't think of a cartoon that transcended the medium more than Gravity Falls. Gravity Falls wasn't a show that you watched, it was an experience that you participated in, and it was a community that you felt a part of. And anybody that points to Gravity Falls and says, it's one of the greatest cartoons ever made, I, uh, yes, it's true, it's just a simplistic way of putting it. But I want to go into more detail. I want to talk about why Gravity Falls was so great. I'm Nemo, and I want to talk about how Gravity Falls changed everything. It was funny. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. So guys, to understand the story of Gravity Falls, and it's a long story, you gotta look at the person who made it. And in this case, Gravity Falls came from the brilliant mind of cartoon legend Alex Hirsch. Alex Hirsch's name is pretty famous now. He's the closest thing I think we have in the cartoon community to a celebrity. This larger-than-life character. I mean, at this point, at Gravity Falls is synonymous with Alex Hirsch's name. The two go hand in hand. He was born in Piedmont, California. I totally probably mispronounced that, but hey, I'm from Michigan. We get some leeway. It's the Midwest. We've, we have an accent. I guess. He did the classic cartoonist thing, a talented young artist who ended up going to CalArts, where he, as we've said in other videos, got very close with J.J. Quintel and Pendleton Ward. And after graduating from CalArts, he actually got his first job in the industry like a lot of other popular creators on the marvelous misadventures of Flapjack. But Alex actually ended up going in a completely different direction, leaving Cartoon Network and going on to Disney, working on the show Fish Hooks. Now, whatever you want to say about this show, however you thought about it, however old you were when it came out, maybe you didn't even watch it, Fish Hooks is a really really funny show, and I remember watching it, and though I wasn't the biggest fan, I did remember laughing way more than I expected. I knew that Alex Hirsch worked on it, but when researching for this video, I found out that he actually developed the series for television, which is pretty huge. I mean, going from just working on one cartoon to developing another one, that's initiative. It's there on Fish Hooks where he met a future collaborator, Justin Roiland. They would go on to do so much together. Justin Roiland, of course, co-created Rick and Morty. He's another legend. Fish Hooks was a hit, and he worked on it for a while, but soon Disney grabbed Alex and pulled them into their executive office, and told them to pitch a show. We'll Looking back on this time developing Gravity Falls and coming up with the idea for it, Alex says that he pulled from his own childhood. I mean, he himself is a twin with his twin sister, so he decided to make a show about that. Except all of the things he imagined as a kid, all of the things he wished were real, the monsters, the aliens, they would be. He would also describe Gravity Falls as a town where every conspiracy theory is true, and I think that's the perfect way of putting it. Alex pulled a lot from his life while developing Gravity Falls. Seuss, as a character, was actually based off of a college roommate of his named Jesus. Combined Finding the ideas of his childhood paired with the perfect summer and a healthy dose of weird and supernatural, Alex's end product was a cartoon called Gravity Falls. The cartoon focused on twin siblings Dipper and Mabel as they spent the summer with their grunkle Stan, who ran a tourist trap in the small town of Gravity Falls, Oregon, where, like I said before, basically every weird thing exists there. It is, in my opinion, a perfect premise, and it turned into an even better show. Disney greenlit it, and after some development, the first episode of Gravity Falls aired in 2012, and immediately it was something special. By the very first episode, this show was growing an audience. People were falling in love with it, and it found an audience immediately. Maybe it was the heart, maybe it was the incredible animation, maybe because it was a breath of fresh air. It was a 22 minute show, something that we hadn't seen in a while. The writing was great, the voice cast was great, everything about this was entertaining and funny and perfect, but there was something else. From the jump, from the very first episode, that last scene, when Grunkle Stan goes behind the vending machine, Gravity Falls made itself clear that it was going to be something different. It was going to be a mystery, and the show was not what it seemed. It wasn't going to be some one-off adventure about two twin siblings interacting with all these supernatural creatures. Gravity Falls is setting out to tell a story, and it did. Before I get into the mystery aspect, I want to talk about everything else that made Gravity Falls special. First of all, you could watch the show and just see how much raw effort was put into it, how beautiful it is, the music, everything is top-notch and passion-driven. There's just so much raw effort put into every frame of the show. One thing that Gravity Falls got prided on and I think is super necessary to talk about in this video is how they aced the family dynamic. Grunkle Stan, Dipper, and Mabel are one of the best representations of family I've ever seen in a show. Alex had this one rule that not a lot of other shows followed, where Dipper and Mabel, no matter what they got into, no matter what fight they had, never hated each other. So many shows go for the weird dynamic where siblings have to hate each other to create some sort of weird comedic tension or something, but Alex created a pair of siblings that felt real, that could fight and yell and get angry, but 
also laughed together a second later because honestly, that's what it means to have a brother or sister. On top of that, Grunkle Stan was the perfect representation of a chaperoning adult who could be fun and loose but also really care about his niece and nephew. I think they're his niece and nephew. The family dynamic is weird. And these incredible characters were brought to life by some top-notch voice acting. There's some great names on this show. Christian Shaw. And if you're questioning if this really is a passion project, most of the characters in the main cast, Seuss and Grunkle Stan, are voiced by Alex Hirsch himself. He was literally just like, let me in the booth, let me do it. And he did it for the entire series. Can you imagine being a showrunner, working on every aspect of the show, and then also getting in the booth and voicing characters? That's insane. That is passion. On top of that, Gertie Falls balanced incredible humor with tender moments and lessons that didn't feel forced and actually kind of came naturally. The show was sweet, and most importantly, Gravity Falls, above all else, had so much heart. And this heart was paired with incredibly interesting supernatural concepts. This show was anything from Monster of the Week to Magical Object of the Week. Anything and everything happened in Gravity Falls, and it was always weird. But no matter how weird the concepts got, it was all grounded by this family, this core group of people that made it so relatable. On top of that, the world building in this show was huge. Gravity Falls felt like a town anybody could visit. We got to know the locals. They were all given names, and they were reoccurring characters. We got to know the weird rituals of Gravity Falls. We got to see the Gravity Falls culture, their summer weens, where they ate, how they lived. It just felt like a real place, and I'm really sad that it wasn't. All of these were just perfect ingredients that made Gravity Falls such an A1 show. Like, this stuff is like the sauce, for real. Everybody loved Gravity Falls. The more it aired, the bigger the audience got, and all of a sudden, it had a huge presence online. But that's not just because the show was good. Because the thing I haven't touched on yet, the thing that it really changed for the entire landscape of television, was its mystery aspect. Everything, from the picture that flashes at the end of the theme song, to the code that would air at the end of the show, Gravity Falls was a puzzle to solve. And solve people did. Soon, entire communities, YouTube channels, all sorts of people were coming together to try to figure out the show, to try to figure out the mysteries involved. And besides the main mystery of who was the author, they also left little breadcrumbs along the way, little other mysteries to solve. We had things like Blendon Blandon, a time-traveling character who appeared throughout the show before his episode. And fans noticed. They would screen cap, they would zoom in, they'd be like, who's this bald guy? They would try to theorize and figure out what was going on, and then we'd get a payoff. In that episode, The Time Traveler's Pig, it was brilliant. This kind of interaction, this kind of mystery solving, made everybody feel like they were a part of the show. Like we were along the ride for Gravity Falls with Dipper and Mabel. You wouldn't just watch an episode and go about your day. You'd watch an episode and you'd write down the code and you'd try to figure it out. And then you'd look online and you'd like watch a breakdown of the episode and you'd try to figure out what was going on. It was different from any other show anybody had ever seen. And the crew was paying attention. They were watching us just like we were watching them. When fans got too close to figuring out who the true author was, Alex Hirsch faked a leak, pinning the author on McGunkett and fooling most of the internet. This man is a genius. The show kept his momentum all the way to season two, and by that point, the show was bigger than ever. The audience was bigger, it was just growing larger and larger every day, the show was getting more notoriety, and season two saw Gravity Falls get even darker. Real blood, actual tension between the characters, dark moments. Not only was it doing everything outside of the show to make it special, but it was also acing the whole being a show part. We saw redemption arcs of bad characters like Pacifica. We got episodes like Not What He Seems, which is literally a masterpiece, magnum opus of television. You cannot convince me otherwise. Don't bring your bad opinions in here. Gravity Falls was constantly finding ways to keep things interesting and to keep fans on the edge of their seat. Maybe we did have to wait months between episodes, but when they came out, they were entire events. You got the popcorn out. I don't know any other show before or since that has been able to pull off something like that. But even though everything was going perfect for the show, behind the scenes, things weren't so great. It turns out running a show, working on every episode, writing whole episodes, and voice acting along every other thing that comes with being a showrunner is pretty stressful. Alex was having a hard time. By the end of season one, he wanted to quit Gravity. He couldn't handle it anymore. Those long nights sleeping in the office, all of the work he had to do, everything he had to juggle. Because he had put so much passion into the show, in turn, it was taking a huge toll on him, his mental health, and his actual health. You're just not meant to overwork yourself like that. But Alex was determined to give the show an ending. That's why we got season two. It is why season two was the last season, but I don't care that it was only two seasons. Gravity Falls set out to tell a story and it told its story. It even got a giant four-part finale, Weird Mageddon, which is honestly just a movie. It was this grandiose send-off to the entire show, and it was perfect. It ended on its own terms, it ended when the story was over, and it put a period on one of the greatest shows of all time. Because after Gravity Falls' spectacular ending, Alex had one more send-off for the show. And if this is not a testament to how incredible he is as a creator, I don't know what is. After Gravity Falls 
ended, Alex organized one last mystery, this time in our world. This was a giant scavenger hunt, one that I had never seen before or since. Completely orchestrated by Alex with the help of others, this hunt involved real world clues placed all across the country, all across the globe. A puzzle that had to be solved by fans, clues and riddles and codes. The internet came together to solve one last Gravity Falls mystery, the whole thing ending in a giant Bill Cipher statue planted in the woods. The statue actually had been moved since there's some drama with it. I don't know what permission he got to place it where. But the point is, Weird Mageddon was the end to Gravity Falls the show. The scavenger hunt was the end to Gravity Falls the experience. And it was an experience. It was a long and winding road, but when it finally came to a close, Gravity Falls had become something unlike anything anyone else had seen or experienced. But what came after? Since Gravity Falls only ended a few years ago, it's harder to pinpoint its legacy, though I think we're starting to see the very beginning of it. Alex took some years off, which rightly so he should have, but now he's over at Netflix, developing another adult cartoon, which honestly we all want to see him make. I'm excited to see what happens there, and I'm excited he's still creating. After the show ended, we were treated to some more Gravity Falls magic, in the form of the long-awaited release of Journal 3, which was actually a book. This was like a New York Times bestseller. It did so great because fans have been waiting for so long, it was so validating to finally get. Alex even even fought for a super special edition that had like the blue light ink. They only made so many. As with a lot of cartoons, Gravity Falls got some comics. There might even be some more one day. I don't really know. But what's really special right now is seeing what the Gravity Falls alumni are doing. The industry kind of works like you work on a show and then if you're good enough and the network sees you, you can pitch and hopefully have your own show one day. That's exactly what we saw with Gravity Falls. Gravity Falls alumni Dana Terrace went on to make The Owl House, which is an incredible show. It's currently airing and deserves all the support that it could get because honestly, like I said, it's an incredible show. Alex actually voices one of the main characters. Like, that's how great it is. Matt Braley, another legend on Gravity Falls, went on to make Amphibio, which is another incredible cartoon currently airing on Disney. Both of these shows have the Gravity Falls magic, the charm, because these people were a huge part of it. That being said, they still stand alone as their own works, and they're two of my favorite shows currently airing on TV right now. I'm just glad to see this style of television is being kept alive. Not to mention other massive Disney hits like Big City Greens. And all of these shows combine elements of Gravity Falls. I mean, Owl House is starting to use hidden codes, and all of these shows just undeniably embody elements of Gravity Falls' art and humor. On top of that, Cheyenne Takuchi, another Gravity Falls alumni, has her own Netflix show coming out called Inside Job. That should be great. Sounds like an adult Gravity Falls. I'm really excited. And in the end, all we're really left with is two of the best seasons of television of all time. Gravity Falls transcended what it meant to be a cartoon. It was an experience that people took a part in. It was a game that everyone could play. It was a community that people found support and love in, and there will never be anything like it again. And guys, that's how Gravity Falls changed everything. But as always, I want to know what you guys think. Do you agree? Did you like Gravity Falls? Did you hate it for some reason? Let us know in those comments down below or tweet to us at Roundtable Vids or me at Treasure Nemo. If you want to consider helping out the Roundtable, you can become a member of the channel or support us on Patreon and get exclusive access to scripts and avatars. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, share it, and subscribe to the Roundtable for more incredible cartoon content. As always, guys, I'm Nemo, and I'll see you next time. Peace.